All right, so we have two different kind of text blocking sketches here. And this is the one I've decided is the most interesting. I also like this. This is just my own taste. Uh, I love stickers, right? And so I like to do kind of a, a text edition that even if you remove the background, it still works, right? It also makes it versatile. So if this was like for an event and there were different offerings or a conference or something, you could have this free floating and then you could have it in a horizontal format and put information off to the side. So lots of reasons you might choose the text blocking you that you choose, but this is just for your poster. So also notice the border. The border is fairly even on the top and the sides. It's even a little bit narrower on the top and then it's weighted on the bottom. That's pretty typical of, of poster borders to have a, a weighted bottom. It's kind of like how you mat work. And notice how I have more negative space at the bottom of my background than I do at the top. And that's because our eyes tend to make things fall. So this is just to help the eye take in the information in a hierarchy of design that, that I think is most engaging as the artist. Okay, now that I have that, we have to get to the serious work of the type design, right? And before we can get into the kerning and the spacing and the shaping, we have to actually find the, the letter form that we want to use. So a resource for that that I have linked in the assignment, and it's in links as well for the Canvas page, is called defont.com. This is like Pixabay for typefaces. So designers that design type, typographers, some amateur, some professional, some better, some worse, put up their type design here. And just like in Pixabay, they tell you what their license is, but these are not all Creative Commons open. Most of them are free for personal use. So basically that would be a, a Creative Commons license where you're not able to profit from it. You can't use it for commercial purposes. Now, my thinking is I don't want anyone to just use a typeface as is. We're going to be transforming these into our own. So what we're looking for is based on our sketch, what's a typeface that gives us a good start that we can then modify from. And these are just the ones that were recently added. Things are being added to this all the time. So you can search. And I can search for different themes and categories. Um, I'm actually just going to search for poster. I'm kind of curious what has that tag. There's two pages. And I definitely like the kind of uh, dissolved, vintage, distressed typefaces. I like the hand done ones. This kerning is awful, but poster queen is fun. Would be fun to modify for what I'm doing. This one's a little too designy, but could be interesting. So I want you to pick three to five and just make a note of them. And honestly, what I do is I just do a screen grab of their name because they can always be searched for. So I liked not poster men. I liked poster queen. You can look up graffiti. You can look up handwritten. You can look up scribble. You can look up neon. There's all kinds of themes of typeface. And then I just like the one that's called poster. Okay, now this is how it should work and will work on your own computers that aren't networked in the district. You can just say download and it will give you a zip file in your downloads folder. You open up that file. You can try it on your computers, but I've tried it with the, the new security measures and it doesn't work. And it opens up a TTF or an OTF. You click on the TTF or the OTF and it will open it in what's called the font book, which is Max typeface catalog. And then you say install. And then it will require an administrative password, which I don't have, so we're not able to install it. 
usually you're able to install. I've never had a system, a security system, that doesn't allow you to install typefaces. So I'm going to show you the workaround. But once they are installed, then you could use them, potentially, uh, just by using the type tool in Photoshop. And you would find them up here. So I'm going to make this nice and big so you can see, because this is high resolution. And there are some advantages to this. Using it as an actual type tool and then choosing your typeface. And you can use ones that are already in Photoshop, the defaults as well. You can choose from there. This is helpful. That's a nice distressed one. Because you can affect the kerning this way. You can obviously fix misspellings this way. The way you fi fix the kerning is you hold down Option and use your arrow keys. And if I wanted the kerning to be, you see how the Y and the A are now overlapping? If I wanted the kerning to be less here, I just select that space, hold down Option. And I can customize all of this. If I want it between the, the E and the H, be a little tighter, I can do that. Maybe a little bit wider between the T and the H. So that's just basic typesetting. But that's not the typeface I want. And I wasn't able to download the poster. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on it. So I go to its page, and it gives some, sometimes it gives some uses. Notice they won't have special characters. This is only caps. That's true of a lot of these free for personal use ones. But I can type my text here and get a preview. So I'm going to say day of the. And then I want it, let's say, large. And it will show it to me. I can zoom in. Because these are type. That should be pretty clean. And then what I'm going to do is do a screen grab of this. Because this is something I'm going to modify as a vector. So that's one option. And then I can also do dead. I'm separating it out into the two. Try the exclamation mark, but I don't think this one has exclamation marks. And then same thing. Get a screen grab of it. So lots of screen grabs here that I have the option to use. With those screen grabs, I'm going to start blocking them in as a composite in Photoshop. This is to figure out what I want to use. But once I figure it out, and once I've modified them, then I'm going to bring them into Illustrator and trace them as vectors. But make sure you spell things right. Notice that you can't fix the kerning that way. Just in these previews, but we can fix the kerning when we individually typeset. And we can stretch them and we can play with that. So I like the kind of zombie type for sure. That's one option. Let's put those in a folder together. And let's name the folder after that typeface. These are typefaces, not fonts. Fonts are modifications to typefaces, like bold or italics. And most of these typefaces from Defont will not come with any fonts. Okay, go back. What were the others I liked? So, Poster Queen was one. Click on it. Whoops, that goes to the website of the type designer. If anyone wants to do final presentations on a type design designer, you might find them this way. Here we have some different versions of it. That's nice. It comes with different fonts. It has a fat font version of the typeface. If you, I was able to download it and use it, that'd be great. Okay. They also will often have like donation links 
if you want to support these designers putting this stuff up for free. This is an OTF. It's called an open type file. I'll try it the way you're supposed to try it. Unzip it. Double click it. Try to install it. But I need administrative privileges, which I'm not going to get as just a faculty member. Because if I had that information, I could install all kinds of stuff. So we have to work around. But on your own computer where you have ability, you can install as many of these defaults as you want. So I'm going to put in my type. And I often put in lowercase just to see if they even have it. This does not. That kerning is awful. So I might use a Y from this one and the D and the A from this one. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and say large, submit, up oh, large is too large. <laughs> Got to go to medium, zoom in a little bit, not too much or it gets too soft, and then do a nice clean screen grab. While it's still previewing, I can grab it quick and drop it in to Photoshop. This is another option. And of course, what's great about Photoshop and compositing is I can stretch them to kind of fit within my text block. I haven't arched them yet, but I can also warp them with Command-T, right-click inside. And tilt their sides. I can play with their perspective. All with Command T. Perspective can be fun with type, right? Generally, you want to avoid horizontals and verticals. So seeing these different options. And that's pretty close. It's not a bad, bad choice, except that Y is so bit so awkward. Okay, now what about dead? See if they have an exclamation mark, they probably don't. Right. Yeah, it's not as interesting. And I don't love that the kerning is, is uh, overlapping already in its defaults. But I'll do my diligence. This is why you need at least three options to work with. But notice how all my op options have kind of a similar character to them. So sometimes I'll, I'll use different aspects of each one when designing type. Let's use perspective, oh, not perspective, let's use distort. I'm going to take the corners down. Use warp. Love the warp. Give it a little bit of a curve. And it looks a little too bubbly for me. But you can see how it fits the text blocking pretty well. Let's put those into a folder. And that one's called Poster Queen. So there's a lot of planning. There's a lot of thinking about what the end product will be. And there's a lot of organization, kind of like when we did our animation. I can take that whole folder, I'm going to play with Command T, and I can take the opacity down just on the folder, so as I distort and play with these to fit my blocking sketch, 
I can see my sketch underneath for my type text block. 